Hello and welcome to the very first episode of ET Studios Security Strokes in association with ET CISO. In this show, we're going to be delving deep into cyber security and I'm your host Shilpa Ratnam. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about fortified defenses against ransomware attacks and in discussing those best practices we have two top cyber security experts. We have PM Ramdas, who is the head of cyber security for the Reliance Group. And we also have Satyanandan Atyam, who is the chief risk officer of Tata AIG. It's my honor and pleasure to welcome the both of you. Thank you so much for taking out your time. Okay, to lay this foundation, what is your approach when it comes to ransomware attacks? And does it differ at all from traditional methods? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, traditional method uh, is something like you are uh, only mitigating the risk or ransomwares with the traditional methods like you are only having uh, old uh, kind of uh, virus definitions or all kind of uh, technologies which is there in uh, there in the system but if it is come to a new strategy we're in era of uh, artificial intelligence so in that case we have to have a uh, implementation of uh, new uh, uh, new technologies cutting edge technologies which will eventually help you to eradicate uh, the menace of um, uh, this kind of uh, ransomware attacks in the market but you know eradicating it is never a solution yes, right because there are always loopholes and especially with ai as we're mentioning yes. you know, it always finds that loophole to come in so when, once you know that complete eradication is not possible how do you take that forward well see when you talk about ransomware attacks it's all about a vulnerability which has been exploited within the organization network mm -hmm. And typically, when this vulnerability is exploited, the typical attack vector is all about phishing. Mm. The much of the methodologies, how a ransomware attacker uh, tries to get into the network is through a phishing simulation or uh, through a phishing attack, where uh, one of the employee clicks an email and creates a very uh, a net uh, connection outside the network, which is quite secure because it is a connection that is established from inside the network to the outside of the network. So I would say, you know, it's not a question of the traditional methods or the modern methods. I think it is sticking to basics. Mm -hmm. The basics of how exactly you have ensured that you have a right response and recovery mechanisms. Because the employee awareness around his ability of identifying a phishing email and not submitting the credentials or not able to click the, UR, the infected URL is something is a you, 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 are, you are chasing it, you know, you, you cannot even fix it at any point of time because it depends upon how reinforced your simulation method methodologies are to educate the employee and this is a more of a behavioral pattern of an employee which you need to get corrected so the entire you know the perspective remains is how your response and recovery mechanisms are operating mm -hmm. the basics of how you ensure that your playbooks are in place where your network security guys your technical security guys are able to identify and what are the steps they need to take to eradicate or to mitigate that risk so i think <coughs> that the perspective is about putting the basics in place and reinforcing the basics so that you have a your exposure is contained in tomorrow you know you cannot um, stop a massive attack mm. you can always ensure that your attack vector is not lateral it doesn't move laterally and your exposure is limited mm. so that is the effort i think what has now what is already there in the bucket of organizations there is nothing much we can do would you also agree that uh, when it comes to ransomware attacks phishing is the number one method? Is that the entry point, would you say? Uh, as he said, uh, yeah, rightly said, uh, phishing uh, is the number one method, but still there are, as uh, you discussed, like um, uh, there are weakened systems mm -hmm. and there are uh, vulnerabilities in the system. If you have a, if you are using, a, uh, for an example, if you are using a legacy system, which uh, does not have a uh, patch mechanism in place, and uh, if it is uh, vulnerable, and then we are just uh, leaving a spot for attacker to get in. Mm -hmm. okay. So, uh, as he rightly said, uh, coming on to mitigating things, so the lateral movement or lateral uh, escape of that particular uh, virus or, or the ransomware is, is the way where we can just contain and uh, to stop the attack at a point of time. So, you're saying when you have a legacy system with no patches, okay. to secure that point is going to be difficult. So, then yes. you try to stop the attack through another method. Yes, yes. So, uh, sometimes uh, keeping uh, an eye, eye with an, uh, a legacy systems, which is really a, a, a roadblock mm -hmm. or which is a, really a challenge for a CISO, mm -hmm. 
to maintain that particular uh, legacy system on the environment mm -hmm. sometimes you have to keep that legacy system because of some some uh, configuration which need which business required so only thing is you only need to segregate that system from the network so mm -hmm. that even if it is in, in case of a attack happens mm -hmm. so we can just contain that particular attack you know when it comes to the overall cyber security in a company how important is the prioritization of ransomware attacks would you say that the number one threat i would not say a number one threat mm -hmm. i would say it is more propagating these days mm -hmm. Uh, more propagating these days, you know, typically when you see an attack vector, there are multiple attack vectors through which uh, a perpetrator can enter your network. But these days, it is an easy method to enter the network for the very reason the 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 firewalls, the perimeter security, which every organization have invested. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the traditional method of getting through the network was is now very tough because every organizations have in you know, implemented a lot of security solutions. Ransomware as a methodology through creating a outside, in, uh, you know, inside out connection mm -hmm. through exploiting a vulnerability or through a phishing mm -hmm. is a more of an easy method. So I would say it is more of propagating or more high propensity methodology of how, you know, the people are able to, and they, they're also able to create an impact. Mm -hmm. For the very reason, if you are able to secure a confidential critical debt of the organization, the ability of the organization to really continue its business is impacted and therefore the much better negotiating power comes to the perpetrator or the attacker. Mm -hmm. So this creates more of a you know havoc or, or, or a crisis for the organization. So that's the only thing but I think the, getting the basics you know in terms of how exactly you approach it, mm -hmm. how, how exactly you understand the mindset of an attacker mm -hmm. and how exactly you create your own models of protecting your organization, creating the right backups because typically when a ransomware attack happens the type of negotiation that happens on the encrypted data mm -hmm. is only worthwhile until and unless you are not encrypt you are creating a right backup of your data itself. Mm -hmm. Because if you have the right backup strategy in place, your extensible storage and you have the right restoration drills which are conducted over a period of time and if you are able to restore the data to some extent you are not vulnerable to the attacker's request or attacker's demands. Mm -hmm. So I think there has to be a, a holistic approach on that. And that would really help the organization to go forward here. So when it comes to negotiating with the attacker, what do you think uh, an organization should do? Should they even indulge in that conversation? Or is it better to have a backup and stonewall that conversation? So I think this is a contextual to the you know situation what the organization is into. There is no golden rule around it. Mm -hmm. You know, typically you know organizations uh, they they if they you do not have a right strategy of backup and restoration and mm -hmm. you are not able to you know uh, be confident about the data and also if there is a lot of personal data which is being encrypted and compromised and which has exfiltrated. See, there are two components of ransomware. Mm -hmm. He encrypts your data and he exfiltrates it. Mm -hmm. There have been multiple uh, cases where encryption happened but exfiltration didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So when it is only an encryption and no exfiltration, because see, you have multiple layered security in organization. If you had ensured that you have a layered security which did not allow exfiltration, then your exposure is not much. So then there is no question of coming to the pressures of a, a, a perpetrator or attacker. Mm -hmm. Because it is only the encrypted data, there is not, nothing moving out of the organization. But if there is an exfiltration, then the scenario became changes. So I think it's about, about the organization, how they approach things and uh, how they take it up. Yeah. So uh, I just want to add uh, mm -hmm. two, three points onto this. Like, um, uh, it's about the company or the organization, whether how they are reacting mm -hmm. to the, uh, the ransomware uh, ne negotiations. This is against uh, with the organization and the organization is uh, for a safer side, you should not involve and no ransom to be paid. Mm -hmm. Okay, because this is right, if you pay a ransom, mm -hmm. you are ending up with, the, uh, uh, ending up with losing your uh, money mm -hmm. as well as the data. You feel that even if you pay this ransom, exactly. the attackers don't have ethics, exactly. which is what we were also yeah. talking about, right? Exactly. Even if they return your data, they could have made then, a copy. Yeah. So, and plus, uh, since uh, he was mentioning the backups, so uh, backups is the only solution for the ransomware attack. Mm -hmm. So there is only and only one solution, which is towards the ransomware attack is backup. So you should have, your organization should have regular backups, mm -hmm verified backups mm -hmm. and that backup has to be restored mm -hmm. on a periodic basis mm -hmm. and that integrity of that backup has to be checked on time to time and at the same time you have to have a uh, the backup uh, saving mechanism not uh, 
on on prime on premises if you if, even if you can have uh, the backup mechanism outside of organization or mm -hmm. on a geographical separations like we say on the disaster recovery sites mm -hmm. and preferably uh, keep your backups on offline Okay. In not that, in the cloud. Not in the cloud or an offline. What I'm saying is, like, even in, in case of an attack, there is a chance of that backup is also get mm -hmm. encrypted. Absolutely. So in that case, if you are keeping it in offline, so there is a chance, chance. of uh, recovering it so fast. So there is no negotiation with the attacker, mm -hmm. and there is uh, there is only one safe way, which is you how to have your backups on place, mm -hmm. verified, and the integrity checked on time to time. Okay, so no negotiation is something that the two of you are pretty clear about, but the data shows that about 91% of Indian companies have been under ransomware attack over the past year, of course, because of the rise in AI uh, as well. And also, it shows that 55% of companies have ended up paying these attackers twice, which means that exploitation has been twice, there have been multiple breaches yeah. as well. What do you think this data shows and what lessons can we learn from it? So, according to the survey, hmm. last two years after the COVID, uh, the ransomware attack has been spiked up. Hmm. It's an industry of $600 million. Okay. So, as a rise of uh, artificial intelligence, the ease of getting tools for making a malware or a ransomware is really, really easy. Easy. Okay. Anyone can just make it. It's a matter of some, some dollars and just propagate into uh, a million companies or a million users. Mm -hmm. So, out of that, even if you get a 10 percentage of it, the attacker's motive is clear. I mean, he is uh, making his uh, return of interest. So, so, uh, so that is there. So, in this case, as you mentioned, what I can say is that if a person is getting the same attack again and again, mm. so that means that particular organization is not uh, really mitigated the risk mm. or he is not uh, having a particular risk management or a penetration testing or a vulnerable, vulnerability assessment is in not place. Mm -hmm. So, if you are find or if you found a, a risk or, or a vulnerability, if you are not mitigating it, mm -hmm. of course, you are opening a door for the attacker to come in and steal your data. Mm -hmm. So, this is really an uh, embarrassment for a company or an organization if you are having the attack again and again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, CISOs or those who are having uh, or uh, the head of uh, your data privacy and the cyber security has to have a, uh, a stringent rule or a stringent mechanism to find and eradicate, not eradicate, at least mitigate mm -hmm. the risk in the organization. Well, I think the, the perspective which you gave in terms of the market stats mm -hmm. of how organizations are getting compromised and mm -hmm. how organizations have been attacked through a ransomware attack vector. So, to, to a greater extent, you know, I would not comment about the quantum, but definitely there is a increase in the percentage and there is a, there is a huge concerns around that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the perspectives is all about, you know, how exactly the companies have invested themselves, you know. So, if, if, you, if the organizations have not invested well on the security strategies on, and see, end of the day, it's not about getting invested on the preventive security strategies, putting our, our multiple tools. It's also having a right response and recovery mechanisms and right and response and recovery trainings so that you have a right playbooks in place. So, this this quantum what you see would definitely not increase over a period of time because I, I would say the awareness in terms of people understanding and our know, corporates and industries understanding of what exactly needs to be done of how exactly needs the mitigation action needs to be planned is already you know existing now so you would not see a great spike in this number now after covid there was a there was a spike because I think there was a lack of awareness and there was a lack, lot of exploitation because the digital acceleration was huge. Mm -hmm. The amount of digital acceleration which organizations have gone through after COVID to really acquire the customer and to, you know, have the, the customer life cycle journey itself was made digital. So, a lot of businesses moved their entire business model onto digital. And because security always is a second investment, the last investment, the first is to put the business on, you know, to start mm -hmm. getting the trickle down of the revenue. Mm -hmm. So, this is something what you saw of digital acceleration and after the COVID though everybody adopted digital and the security practices always follow up on, you know. So, therefore, you saw the huge amount of exploitation of ransomware attacks. But now, now I think the industries and the experts, I think, I think everybody has that amount of capability to understand and people have understood that, you know, what are the methodologies or what are the approaches they need to take. Mm -hmm. I do not see this quantum being increasing to such accelerated numbers mm -hmm. over a period of time. This would plateau. 
definitely this amount of uh, attacks would plateau over a period of time and what would also happen is that you would see that people are you know putting a right amount of investment around people organization will put right amount of investment on people and the process which would really take care rather than getting investment on security technologies because there is no limit to the security technologies or whatever you want to invest you have multiple tools in the market and every tool is taking care of one attack vector but the perpetrator can have multiple attack vectors to go to the organization so there is no limit so so i think this 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 is my perspective that uh, this is something going to plateau over a period of time that's very interesting now i want to talk about employee awareness as well that you touched upon but before that do you also agree with him that now we're going to see this plateau this sort of ransomware attacks which had increased because all the digital assets went online during the pandemic in in a manner that's never been seen before the surface area of attacks was larger than ever before but do you think despite the rise in ai it's actually going to plateau i don't really think that because uh the amount which i said that figure which i mm-hmm. i said uh, is already showing that okay there is a descent oh. in the in the market i mean uh, the uh, ransomware attack which is happening across the globe mm-hmm. so of course there is a descent and uh, this is because of uh, the the companies are the organizations are really ne- uh, understood the the priority of uh, Uh, investing onto the cyber security initiatives and cyber security mechanisms so that really worked well mm-hmm. so that is what the results are, uh, uh, early results are coming in so attack vectors as he said it's change mm-hmm. changing and um, uh, this attacker can have uh, new attack vectors mm-hmm. and uh, there is a change of uh, rapidly evolving the threat landscape mm-hmm. so it is changing drastically changing and uh, uh, there are modern techniques comes in so we are not here to predict whether uh, whether uh, this is going to spike again mm-hmm. or not but we have to be uh, ready with all respects whether uh, to mitigate or to uh, eradicate uh, the ransomware attacks So resilience is yes. the key word. Now, cyber criminals harnessing AI for their attacks. Can organizations also harness the power of AI, ML, uh, to fight against these attacks? Yes, of course. So, uh, so there is a saying uh, like, uh, if you want to get rid of from a thief, then mm. you have to think like a thief. Mm. Okay. So, if, if you think like a thief, and you will be easily come to know that okay what all are the vulnerable area of your house hmm. so and you will invest money on to that particular vulnerable areas mm-hmm. to you know place and to make uh, strengthen it so uh, with the use of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning so uh, there are many multiple uh, opportunities or multiple tools available in the market uh for an example if you are securing your end points mm-hmm. so end point security and response edr yeah. or an xcr or an mdr managed uh, end point response so once you uh, secure your end points mm-hmm. so you are good to go mm-hmm. because the end points are going to get affected at the first uh, it's going to be the patient zero mm-hmm. i mean uh, so there are going to be the, the attack going to happen there only the mm-hmm. first thing so if you can secure mm-hmm. your end points mm-hmm. with a most powerful artificial intelligence or whatever you can say mm-hmm. the tool then you are good to go oh that's that's very interesting yeah. point not just using 2fa but actually using ai in yes. your endpoint security yes and plus i'm just want to add mm-hmm. uh you can have a zero trust policy mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. zero trust means i'm i'm not trusting anyone whether it is a people process or a service mm-hmm. which is coming into a network or which is accessing to my resources mm-hmm. each and every time uh, that particular service or a, or that particular program if it is calls it has to get authenticated mm-hmm. irrespective of whether it is authenticated before or not i am not trusting mm-hmm. so you can have a zero trust policy as well mm-hmm. if it is it's a, it's a permutation and combination mm-hmm. okay if you can just Mm, your uh, uh, artificial intelligence tools and plus your policies and procedures on place then you are it is good enough to at least to understand and uh, to fight against uh, ransomware absolutely zero trust is something that all companies are adopting now and it seems to be working as well see uh, i think you know i i agree to a greater extent what uh, you know ramdas has said 
and uh, you know adding up to what he said uh, typically what i always believe is a simulation you know when we talk about phishing simulation softwares we are trying to strengthen the employee conduct risk so the conduct means it's all a behavior pattern so organization are exposed to a conduct risk what i believe it mm -hmm. and the phishing simulations are to mitigate the conduct risk of a employee because how he behaves what is the behavior pattern of clicking a infected url there is another aspect to it the type of playbooks mm -hmm. now the type of playbooks which we need to implement the type of uh, you know the playbooks which you need the the sock the sock service provider you know the the f the first line of defense from a network security perspective how they are going to put those right uh, steps to mitigate a risk typically you need to have a right detection mechanism a preparation on that a analysis a containment and then you have to have a, a remediation and then a post incident remediation so these are the five six steps which typically you need to have a right playbook around each area so i would believe that when you talk about uh, employee or a user it's a simulation and when you talk about the actual technical security guys handling a ransomware attack it is more about these playbooks and then you have solutions known as breach attack simulations these days mm -hmm. so ability to run these breach attack simulations in the network and to also see the what are the vulnerabilities which you have the weaknesses in the system in the process in the different applications or in the different infrastructure landscape and then see that you know whether you can strengthen them because because i think the 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 entire perspective of training retraining simulating an environment simulating a similar environment of attacks and see how your different strategies are operating mm -hmm. the different strategies from your own technology investments the different strategies from a perspective of how your re response and recovery is operating mm -hmm. the different strategies of how your your network security guys are able to use the playbook and really act upon when there is an actual attack or a simulated attack i think these all combined you know really would help an organization to go forward absolutely you know defense is the best form of offense and with regard to that we spoke about employee awareness now according to you what do you think is the best way to increase employee awareness and also to foster a security consciousness in the organization i think it's a tone from the top mm. you know i think every security organization i would say when i say security organization is the department or the risk function in particular <coughs> they have their own right process and right interventions to create employee awareness but what is more important is the tone from the top how a technology risk like ransomware or a phishing is seen as a business risk the day business believes that this is not a technology risk this is more of a business risk then your tone from the top comes in and then the seriousness around the matter comes in the seriousness around the matter comes to the consequence management process you are running a simulation you have seen some amount of violations with employees of they not able to detect a phishing email and what type of consequence management did you do what about of penalizing the employee for his wrong behavior because his incorrect click on the credit on the url and the credentials being submitted is not a technology risk it's a business risk your business is going to come to a standstill if there is a ransomware attack so the first intervention i would say is a tone from the top of how exactly do you really want to communicate to the employee that how serious this subject is the second is what i said already the bau process of your security organizations your risk organizations have already the right interventions in place so they putting the right breach attack simulation methodologies of simulating your network and seeing whether your response recovery defense mechanisms are operating your phishing simulation where your employee behavior and conduct risk the behavioral pattern is changing and then holistically you know do aggregating all this data to really present what is the posture of the organization so i think all combination of these things we are management intervention a uh, functional intervention technology intervention the risk intervention really will take a organization to the next level yeah that was very comprehensive indeed would you like to weigh in yeah so um, once if you want to have a, a employee awareness so it has to be as you said comprehensive awareness you have mm -hmm. to have so in that case of a, you can have a phishing simulations and attack simulations mailers and uh, those kind of things you can always have but where we are just uh, having lack is there is something called a human error mm -hmm. okay uh, there is no patch for human gotcha. error one fine day despite of all your security mailers your phishing campaigns your security posters mm -hmm. digital posters and everything one fine day one employee will uh, click a, a malicious link or download uh, a, a link which uh, a file which uh, uh, 
uh, will contribute or activate a ransomware or a virus. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't have any uh, patch for the human error. Mm -hmm. So the only thing is we have to have a constantly on regular basis, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the awareness campaign has to run and where we can just give them, uh, see like uh, uh, rather than penalizing that employee, we can, we should, that the company should have a proper reporting mechanism mm -hmm. because see, the uh, users very skeptical about reporting an incident because uh, even if incident happens, mm -hmm. people may think that, okay, if I am said this, whether my my job will be on a risk or something, mm -hmm. then if you are hiding those kind of incidents, mm -hmm. it is really contributing a big risk to the organization. For an example of an attack, mm -hmm. every second counts. Absolutely. Your response okay. time response has been immediately. Counts. Okay. Especially for the ransomware attack. If the ransomware is triggered, mm -hmm. it starts encrypting the data. Mm -hmm. So every second counts. So a person or an organization should be having a proper reporting system mm -hmm. to the first uh, level mm -hmm. from where an IT team can or an incident responder can uh, take over the place and uh, contain uh, the situation. And again, as I said, the top level uh, uh, situation or the top level uh, procedure, we have to take them on confidence mm -hmm. on the top management on the senior management will always help you out mm -hmm. to know what is as he said what whether this risk is associated to a business so data is equal to money okay so if you can put your numbers onto money response uh, aligning to your risk mm -hmm. so they are ready to invest so uh, major challenge what we are actually facing most of the organizations facing to break the mindset of the uh, the board members or the top management mm -hmm. so uh, if you can put this on numbers mm -hmm. then they are ready to go but tell me the number won't it be the entire worth of the company because now all assets are online right yes, yes. so would you say that has made it easier for the board to see the importance of cyber security today? Yes, uh, more or less uh, maximum organizations, mm -hmm. I would say maximum. Everybody is now realized that, okay, mm -hmm. uh, the cyber security is, is really required. Mm -hmm. And plus all the administrative authorities or the complaints authorities also mm -hmm. uh, sense norms mm -hmm. to abide. For an example, uh, Indian uh, computer response emergency uh, computer emergency response team mm -hmm. CERT India if an incident happens you have to report that incident to see uh, CERT in within six hours mm -hmm. so this is no so that really helps you out mm -hmm. uh, to know uh, this has happened mm -hmm. and what we can do the next step and plus sharing the knowledge mm -hmm. like Threat intelligence yeah Absolutely. so with your peers so like if I am having a, uh, I, I had an incident, I can just tell him that, okay, this had happened in my office mm -hmm. and we have uh, successfully recovered from that. Okay, we had did step A, B, C, D. And knowledge sharing is again a, a, a good uh, method mm -hmm. or a methodology which we can actually look forward to. And if, if you can take confidence, uh, if you can take senior management on confidence, if they are getting into cyber security, mm -hmm. so that is a very positive message to all the employees. See, since they are onto cyber security, then we should also. Mm -hmm. And we can, CISOs uh, uh, can uh, insist uh, senior leaders uh, during their uh, group meetings say that uh, the significance of cyber security, mm -hmm. which is related to the business continuity and business revenue. So this will uh, eventually will get you uh, more and more onto cyber security uh, posture of that particular uh, organization. All right. So we both agreed on all three of us agreed on the top down method yes. when it yes. comes yes. to cyber security. Now, uh, when it comes to implementing the best practices, uh, what are the biggest roadblocks that you think CISOs face? Uh, first is. Um, lack of budget mm -hmm. I should say that okay uh, everyone cannot be able to have 
because cyber security is really required a significant significant investment if you want to correct your security posture by saying that you shouldn't be investing uh, or you shouldn't be placing all the eggs in one basket at the same time you have to have what is happening outside and what is bare minimum you have to have mm -hmm. so that is a major challenge which everyone every organization the ciso is uh, facing so uh, the budget and and skillful uh, manpower mm -hmm. so that is also another roadblock which I actually we faced uh, we saw around uh, the globe uh, getting a proper uh, or a skillful man manpower or, a, or an employee and uh, having a lack of budget mm -hmm. so it's going to be a first roadblock mm -hmm. uh, what I felt mm -hmm. in that but tell me in a country like India even here we face a lack of skillful manpower you think when it comes to cyber security not in India mm -hmm. uh, perfectly India is is uh, is growing and um, the cyber security landscape is also growing and everyone is aware about what is cyber security and where we can contribute towards the cyber security or uh, where I can contribute towards mm -hmm. uh, organization security so skill set again uh, we don't have any problem uh, we are not facing any problem in India because uh, uh, since in the matter of resource constraints mm -hmm. uh, skill sets is something like your degrees or certifications won't uh, endorse your experience mm -hmm. okay so experience comes in with tackling the real uh, the uh, incidents mm -hmm. so which will actually give you the experience so those kind of skill sets are uh, really lacking i mean it's moving but but at, at this point of time it's it's bit lacked for an organization mm -hmm. or an organization is not capable of a so smaller organization will not be able to place a CISO mm -hmm. I mean so where the virtual CISO comes in mm -hmm. so so uh, every every organization will not be able to afford a CISO on, on their board so this is again so skill set is it's another lack and and the budget mm -hmm. so this is first and foremost um, roadblock which uh, faces most of the CISOs faces uh, when it comes to cyber security implementation. Are you agreed on that skill set and budget? Uh, well, I would like to differ a bit, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but at the perspective, it's a question of the perspective. I think you know, with the last five years or ten years, you know, things the, the things have changed, and with the COVID, what has happened, the digital acceleration which has happened, the ability of the organization to endorse uh, cyber security as a business risk has significantly increase i would say uh, the, the 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 amount of uh, the board uh, time you know the the risk management committees the board meetings you know the amount of time that is being spent on cyber security discussions in terms of the preparedness and the amount of budgets which are getting endorsed or which are, uh, which are getting i would say it has been a significant and tremendous change over the period of last 3 years and it's on a positive side so my, my perspective around budgets would be something I think we have crossed the era mm -hmm. where, where you know the risk function had to justify mm -hmm. in terms of why a certain investment needs to be made to mitigate a certain control because end of the day it is certain controls you know for which you invest for that's one, one, one perspective which I have the second perspective on skill set I think we all need to acknowledge that cyber security is not part of our formal education if you if you talk about anybody who is getting into a cyber security profession either he's from a business risk side or either is a technology risk side mm -hmm. or on the process risk side of security they are not getting a formal education in their you know education years this profession in last five to eight years you are seeing a lot of colleges that are coming with a lot of professional courses in that but it was not earlier so the skill set what you see in the industry is all about getting hands-on training when they are doing the job and now the certifications are coming into place where people pick it up but the major challenge is all about retention mm -hmm. and because the threat vectors have increased so much and the demand for cyber security professionals to come and plug those holes in your network or in your process is so much you are seeing that people with less amount of experience are getting bigger roles mm -hmm. And because of which the learning experience 
you know typically if you see that if i if i want to hire a person at a senior level i want 10 years of demonstrated experience mm -hmm. I am not able to get a 10 years of demonstrated experience. I have to settle down with somebody with five years of demonstrated experience, which also means that I'm putting a person on a role who has a learning curve. Mm. So I would say that the, and then again, because so much demand is in the market, the ability to retain the person for next three years or four years is again a challenge. Mm -hmm. And therefore a contextual understanding of the security controls in the organization is lacking for a person because the person is changing every three years. And in these type of professions, you need to have people who are sticking to the organization, who knows the in and out of the organization, and who knows that where the loopholes are and how, what are the next security strategies you need to implement, what are the next projects you need to run, how we need to plug in those applications, how we need to plug in those infrastructures, what has been the legacy application, how I've quarantined my legacy application in a certain network. So there is a lot of inherent, inherent knowledge the person would have. And because of so much demand of cybersecurity professionals, you are not able to retain people. So I would not say the skills of the people. The skills of the people, again, the catch-up part, and again, ability to retain people, mm -hmm. because this profession requires people to be a part of the organization for a longer period of time, so that they are able to really, really add value for your invested security controls, because they know that what has been already implemented, what are the weaknesses, what are the next level of controls they need to implement, and how they need to implement, mm -hmm. and how better they need to implement. Mm -hmm. So this is the challenge. The budget part, I need to be different. As I, I, I told, that things have changed. Things have dramatically changed. And I have been interacting with multiple uh, the risk uh, professionals in the industry, uh, uh, leaving around, you know, even the insurance, the banks, the NBFCs, getting into the manufacturing sector also. I see a lot of uh, great amount of traction in the manufacturing sector itself, mm -hmm. where I think uh, people are, are getting budgets. But there's always a catch-up game. It's, it's, you know, I think it's always a catch-up game. So naturally, you know, we'll always have some grips around what you wanted and what you got. But things have improved. So that's my perspective. So we have two perspectives when it comes to budget. But I think you both agreed that when it comes to CISOs, cybersecurity professionals, you want somebody who's mature in the organization, in that particular organization, because you want that sort of experience with the uh, challenges that have been. Knowledge, the tacit Absolutely. knowledge. The tacit knowledge is to be there. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So I think you know we've had a very fruitful discussion today. It's been very insightful for me. I got to learn so much. And I would really like to thank the two of you for your valuable time and uh, for joining us in our first episode of Security Strokes. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.